you by GN and Co. Sure, gang, and welcome back to yet another episode of After School is After School with your girl, Sis G.U. To my returning listeners, I hope that you guys are well at home. And to those that are passing by, all right, I hope you like what you see and you join the gang, eh, please. I hope you like what you see and you join the gang, eh, please. I hope you, what you, hey, you join the gang, eh, please. Okay, guys, today, I say this like at the beginning of every episode, but like genuinely, I am excited to be having this conversation it's been a long time coming, um, and I'm going to give them the backstory in just a bit. Go for it. But guys, today on the couch, I have Michelle Expert. She's an entrepreneur, a speaker, a moderator, and a broadcaster. She's also the founder and CEO of Resonate Communications. Hello. Michelle, hi. Hello. How are good. you? <laughs> I'm so good. Yes. How are you? I'm good. Yeah. Thank you. I'm so happy you're here. I'm happy to be. I'm quite excited. Oh, I'm also so excited. Yeah. So guys, just a background. Um, I'd known of Michelle and her content and we met through YouTube Black Voices. Yes, we were in the same cohort. Yes, yes we were. Yeah. Um, and then I saw you in person at the meeting that we had mm-hmm. at the YouTube offices. Yes. Um, yeah, cool. And then we did the whole Cape Town thing. Yes, that I was remember. cute. But I feel like the first time I actually got to sit and talk with Michelle was yeah. at um, the Steve Madden oh, event. Oh, and, and Bonan event. Yes. yes um, I'm a bit of a loner so sometimes I don't really like to socialize so yeah, I sat yeah. in my corner and Michelle's like I finished sitting in a corner and we sat in a corner together <laughs> and we just spoke and I just really felt like what you had to say to me and yeah. what the, honestly just the conversation at large really impacted me and it was so casual yeah that I thought there's absolutely no ways that I'm not going to bring her onto the platform so oh. yeah just very happy you're here thank oh, you for I'm your so time happy to be here. I'm so happy to be here yes um, so today, guys, I want us to talk a little bit about purpose. Sometimes you guys ask me how it is that you identify your purpose, how to live in your purpose, walk in your purpose. And I believe that Michelle is someone who's definitely doing that. And she's someone who's been able to take her purpose and make it work for her and build a career out of it. So I just want to speak a little bit about Michelle Expert. Mm. Where did the name come about? Where did the idea come about? Where did your love yeah. for business and finances come about? Shucks, it's going to be a bit of a long story, but I'm going to try We're ready. And- <laughs> I'm going to try and like shrink it up a bit. So Michelle Expert came from me trying to open social media accounts on on the platforms. Yes. And I would type Michelle Lima Uh and there is like a thousand gazillion Lima people because Lima is my surname. Yes. And you know, um, a lot of platforms uh, give you suggestions. Like how about you call yourself Michelle Lima 124? Yes. Or Michelle Expert. Yes. I saw that and I thought, hmm, this Mm -hmm. is cute. Mm -hmm. So So that's how Michelle Expert came about. Okay. Um, But how I fell in love uh, with business is that, so I was raised by entrepreneurial parents. Okay. Um, Growing up, my parents were always starting something. Okay. Like just something. We just had a business, like growing up. But uh, for the most part, my dad was an artist. So my dad made uh, sculpted awards, like Uh quite a lot of stuff. And um, so we actually lived in Cape Town. Okay. And he had a business with a friend there. Okay. And then he started dabbling between Joburg and Cape Town because he was trying to set up his own business in Joburg. Yes. And then that went shush and then yes. we then moved to Joburg and he started running that full time with my mother okay um so what used to happen was that during weekends mm-hmm. how we earned money in our home is you'd have to go to the shop and sell okay that's how we made money okay um and I think I was out of my siblings actually I was the person that was more interested in actually like going there and trying yes. to find out how, how does the business works mm-hmm. what happens and my parents would really take me through it and I loved making money like mm. I loved just like at the end of the day, saying to my dad, today we made 8,000 rand. Yes. Like at that time, and I think this is like 2008. Uh-huh. That's a lot of money. Yeah, I'm like, definitely. what? Your mind blown. Like eight grand. Also the fact that you got to see it happen. Exactly. Mwah. And it's like me, I did these sales. Yeah. And then like my dad I was there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then my dad would say, great, you made 8K. So you get a bigger commission this time. Okay. Yeah. So I used to make the a bit incentive. of. Yeah. Wow. So then I was like, ah, oh, so the strategy is the more you make for the business, yes. the more I can take home. Yes. So I'm definitely going to make more. Uh-huh. So I started thinking along those lines, but I had a lot of other other interests and my parents always encouraged me to take my interests into entrepreneurial. Okay. So I used to love doing hair growing up because okay. my mom is very good with hair. She once had a salon. Okay. So I used to go help every now and then in Cape Town. Uh-huh. And then um, when I wanted some extra money, my mom is like, why don't you go do hair like down the road? Yes. There's like a person that wanted to go do their hair. Mm-hmm. So then I'll do like the kids and the parents would say, oh my God, this 
looks so nice. Can mm. we pay you? Mm. You know, when Zinuele, and then I'll do that. So I, in my head, there was this thing that said to me, if you can offer people value, yes. they'll be willing to pay for it. Yes. And I loved money. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, let's do value. So that's how in a natural uh, business started. I mean, I went forward to like start selling sweets at school, uh -huh. you know, but I was the cool president girl at mm -hmm. school site, so my friends sell them for me, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. So you had employees. Oh yes, so absolutely. Shout out. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so it was stuff like that, that I think um, planted the seed of entrepreneurship in okay, me. Okay, that's yeah. beautiful. I love the fact that it's come from your family. Yeah. And then through what you were able to see at home, you're able to implant it in your own life and yeah. just have it flourish to everything mm -hmm. that you have now. Okay, so would you say that because your family was primarily entrepreneurial, yeah. that... That is what, as much as you're saying it, it exposed you to your purpose. Do yeah. you feel like you had to then search though in some way or another to reveal more of your purpose? Um, absolutely. So I think like any of us, right, we initially start doing what we see yes. for a while. Yes. Until we get to a point where we have to be honest about ourselves, about how we feel about what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for most people, and I mean, I fell into this trap for if you, there's a couple of YouTube videos mm -hmm. about my journey, mm -hmm. but Part of it is that if you grew up in a home where they say, go study, and after you've studied, you'll be successful, you get yep. a job, you'll be great, right? Everybody goes through that whole thing. But what we eventually see down the road is that they will do it, but they'll get to a point where they realize that actually, this is not what I really want, want to, to do. do. Or I want to do this, but maybe not in this industry, maybe mm -hmm. not in this avenue. Mm -hmm. So there definitely was a, a big part of, of searching. Uh, I posted something the other day and I, I, I thought to myself, so what a full circle moment, the life I'm living now, because I remember being a young child. One of the things I used to do a lot is I used to steal like chalk from school. Yes. And when I was just playing, Playing all by myself is that I'd put stones around and start teaching stones gibberish. Uh -huh. I knew I've always wanted to be a teacher, uh -huh. but I just, I knew I didn't want to teach school kids. Okay. But it was like, what else would you then teach? Yes. You know what I mean? So there was that a bit of a, a, a moving forward and to even maybe expand this further is that when I finished my matric, mm -hmm. I wanted to go study radiology. Okay. Yeah. So I went and I registered for radiology. I was going to go to UJ and I was going to yes. study radiology. And unfortunately my father passed away. Okay. So my father passed passing away kind of uh, moved quite a lot of parts in our family. And mm. then we really, and I mean, he was quite ill for some time before that, which we realized that it might not be feasible for me to further my studies, et cetera, yes. et cetera. So only, I feel like only once I was left with no choice or very little choice, mm. did I realize that I've got nothing to lose mm. than just like moving and doing what I really feel that I'm called to do. Yes. Yeah. Okay. No, I get that. I think that I, on my side, um, I don't know. I feel like I'm still discovering my purpose. I'm living in it to some extent, but I okay. feel like there's so much more that I could be doing and there's more interest that I have. I just haven't truly given myself the space or time to truly, um, yeah, just to venture into that and to try and to mm. fail. I have a weird fear, fear of failure. We all do. But I, I, I think mine is a little crippling. We all do. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Then no, okay, good. No, no. Okay. You know, so here's the thing, right? And I think this is something I've, I've, I've come to learn is we all have a fear of failure. Yeah. Like we all like can have sleepless nights yes. about how, like we were even just talking before the recording and I was telling you about all these things that are mm, happening. Mm. Like some of the things that make me not sleep at night is a possibility of all of this crumbling. For sure. Right. But what then becomes important is where do you direct your fear? Mm -hmm. This is the thing for me is that fear will always be there. The fear of failure will always be there. For sure. But how about we take that fear of failure and say, actually, yes, I'm, I'm afraid to fail. Yeah. But maybe I'm also afraid of to staying succeed. in the same place. Oh, I see. I'm afraid yeah. of two years from now, Looking regretting mm. not having moved. Mm. So which fear is greater than the other? Yeah, for in sure. In my case, and what I also encourage a lot of people to maybe start taking on is realize that the fear of regret is yes. even much more deeper than a failure. A failure, Because yeah. the regret will have evidence. Failure won't. The, mm, you won't have evidence whether or not you would have failed or not, mm, right? But you will have evidence that you didn't move. Yeah. Yes. And you did nothing. Yes. And that fear, more than anything, will hit your self-confidence. 
will kill you more than the fear you're experiencing right now. You're right. And I feel like it's seen through everything. You'll yes. see it through your life. You'll see it through yeah. the relationships you have, through yeah. your business. Yeah. It's a constant reminder that you could have Flows. taken the leap, yeah. but you didn't do that. Exactly. Um, okay, cool. Mm -hmm. On that note, mm -hmm. and we were speaking a little bit earlier on, um, I think what's also really interesting when it comes to purpose is that although it may be somewhat hard for people to find their purpose, yeah. and I really feel like it has a lot to do with being honest with yourself, like she said, finding what you're good at and seeing if you enjoy it. Yeah. I think your purpose will bring you a lot of joy and fulfillment in life. But I think there's another layer to it okay. in that now your purpose has been revealed. You're living in it. Woohoo. Yeah. Praise God. I love you. Yeah. Um, but now it's like the difficulties that come with your purpose. Yeah. Now it's the hardships. It mm -hmm. is how much of you is required mm. in order for you to be able to fulfill your purpose and Big to one. live fully within your purpose. Yeah. And yeah, I don't know. Okay. I mean, I don't want to say too much from what we said earlier, <laughs> yeah. but you are in a season of your life where I feel like you are living through answered prayers yeah. and God has truly seen you and he's seen yeah. what it is that he's planted inside of you and yeah. he's calling you to greater. Yeah. Even though you may not feel like you can do it right now, yeah, he clearly yeah. does feel like you can do it. Yeah. But what keeps you going in mm. those moments? Because although we do have doubt and like you said, you yeah. don't want to regret things, um, even when deciding to move forward and knowing yeah. that that is the only way, yeah. it can still be very daunting. Yeah. 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 Shut. So let me, let me, let me answer this in two ways. And the yes. first one is I want to dial uh, back a little bit, sure. talk about the place where you are finding yourself in your purpose, yes. right? I said this in, in another podcast I, I recently did. And what I was saying is that there's this misconception that purpose is the thing. Mm -hmm. Like purpose is like once I get it. Oh, I got it. I'm going to be happily ever after. For Everybody's sure. going to know my name and I'm going to make the cash yes. and I'm going to be good, right? Yes. My realization or rather what I believe God has revealed to me is mm. that purpose is not a thing. It's mm -hmm. not like the one thing, yep. right? Purpose is actually the process. Mm. That's what it is. Mm. But it's the process that is aligned with the seeds that God has planted in your in, in your life. Yes. Um, the big thing about understanding purpose is that you have to understand God mm -hmm. or you have to at least un or have a good relationship with him, with him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because he's the God that he's the God of purpose. He's the God that gave you that purpose. For sure. So that becomes the first thing. So a lot of people say, well, how do I discover uh, my purpose? It's like, yeah, essentially you're not going to know yourself until you know who made you. For sure. Because if he made you in his image, mm -hmm. Then, then who you are of that. is the reflection of him. So mm. do you know him? Yes. That becomes the first part. Yes. And then the second one is realizing that you don't have to find your purpose because uh -huh. it's already within you. Yes. Right? You, you have to come to the realization or be awakened to what exists within, within you. you. Yeah. And the only way to do that is you have to strip yourself of everything mm -hmm. but God. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm. Which is then the process that's difficult for a lot of people. Yes. It's like, how do I then get to a place where I'm just saying, God, it's, it's like only you. It's only you. I'm my, leaving everything at exactly. your feet. My thing was that I was working in corporate yes. and then I felt the leading to quit my job uh -huh. without savings with nothing. And immediately when I quit, I went on a 28 day fast. Uh -huh. It was a month fast. I mm -hmm. went, I remember it was February. I know it very well. Yeah. That fast changed my life. Yes. Because for me, that was a moment I went to God and I said, God, here I am. Mm -hmm. Like I'm confused. I know that there's something that already started my business as a side hustle, but I was like, yeah. I, like this thing is my partner makes this beautiful reference. And he says that, um, there's like a saying before that, but he says, every time you feel discomfort, it feels like um, the, the, the true you that God has made is beating beneath yes. the you that you are right now. Yes. So you can feel Michelle screaming mm -hmm. right under who you are right now. And mm. she really wants to come out. Mm. And that's where, why people will run to alcohol, to sex, to drugs, because now we're trying to silence that voice, that voice, yes. whereas that voice just needs to be heard so yes. that we can start walking. Yes. But that voice requires us to like shed a lot of parts. Yeah, of for us. sure. Like, it requires for you to completely change. Yes. Yeah, I didn't think it was going to go here, but like, yeah. this is something I'm really struggling with, like the death of an old life and coming into like yeah. my purpose. And I guess what God is calling of me in the mm -hmm. season. And I know that they say, you know, you're going to let go of things and things will change. Yeah. In this season, I've really had to learn just how much of that it means. Yeah. Where, where he deep. says that the person that you are going to be will not fit in the spaces yeah. that you have fit in before. The circles that you've made, the friends that you've kept for years, yeah. the things that you used to do that you enjoy, you change entirely. And yeah. I think it's one thing for me to accept the fact that I'm changing and that's cool, but yeah. I'm having such a, a tough time or a weird time adjusting to the the fact that everyone who was associated with that life, yeah. I have to maybe let go of. Yeah. 
because they're not accepting 100% of the new version of myself and yeah. I think that there's this weird layer of feeling lonely yeah. and feeling like I'm going to be an outcast and honestly I feel like I've been in a season of being singled out already yeah. so naturally I, I'm not necessarily the Google that some yeah. of my friends used to know mm-hmm. I'm not always there I'm not always out and that's because I don't find pleasure in certain things that I used to okay. I don't feel fulfilled in certain spaces yeah. anymore yeah. and yeah so sometimes I'll be I've made peace with it and yeah. I'm happy that I'm I'm in the journey yeah. and I've really committed to it yeah. but I think I'm just struggling with the the loneliness yeah. aspect of it she changes your taste oh Google. yeah oh for sure in in a lot of areas but what you need to rest in is knowing that when he changes that taste, mm. he makes available what will quench your thirst. Yes. You know what I mean? Definitely. So yes, you don't identify with the people that you used to identify with before, mm. but he already has aligned people that he's about to bring into your life yes. that you will identify with. Yeah. So loneliness wouldn't be something I'd be worried about. Mm-hmm. More than anything, the prayer becomes, okay, Lord, now that you've moved me from this Place. Now that there's space in Align my life. Align me, yes. right? You are now being capacitated for more. Mm-hmm. So that be- that means that more is already there and it exists. Yeah. So that becomes very important to remember. And I think we often really forget that we serve a God who, who pays for what he orders. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? He just mm-hmm. doesn't clear out the space to do nothing with it. For sure. You know, like when Jesus went into the temple and was kicking people out and was saying they mustn't sell the temples because he, he wanted the plan. temple to be used for, sure. for its rightful use. Yes. And if we take that same analogy and bring it to our lives Mm. we realize that the clearing happens because God is about to do the original plan which is far much more than we can think or imagine Yeah, so much bigger and greater much bigger so maybe what you could be going through is just grief (gasps) I'm gonna keep quiet (laughs) child (laughs) it's just grief of the because remember even if you are even if let's say you're not getting along with them like you used to anymore you still love them Oh, for sure. And you still, you know, you, they, they're still a big part of you. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it has to, it's grief because now you realize that we, you can't connect with them. And it, it, it's a lot more harder, even if you tried mm. to connect with them mm. like that. But God is doing a work. I can, I can tell you that. And we have to also keep in mind that in the same way he's doing the work in your life, uh-huh. he will eventually do his work in, in their this, lives. For sure. And eventually you might reconnect as time goes and yeah. whatever. But what's important for you right now is that you're very selfish with your with journey. With my time, yeah. And also I think I have been someone who has always wanted to share my life, yeah. share just anything and everything that I have. Yeah. And I've been in, a again, a season of isolation and selfishness. Yeah. I've never put myself first the way that I'm currently yeah. putting myself. And, and it's, it's weird. Oh, it's so weird. It's so hard. Yeah, and I think it's also an adjustment for everyone else when they're so used to you being so accessible yeah. and so all of these things and I think again that has a lot to do with my purpose yeah. because I am fully committed to my purpose yeah. and who it is that I need to be I'm no yeah. longer willing to hold on to certain things that I know yeah. he is begging yeah. for me to yeah. let go of and you know I always say to people that when you find yourself in a in a in a space where you are willing to just do too much for people and please people more mm-hmm. than tapping into who you really are mm. essentially what you're saying is that these people you idolize them yep. so oh, they become yes. high above yes than the true living god in your yes. life because he's the one that's saying I, I need your attention yes come spend some time with me yes and people even if like those people sometimes they might be upset they might walk away and say oh, get karma now because mm. whatever whatever It is fine. Mm. What becomes important is as they grow, they will realize why it was important for for you to do the things that you're doing right now. And if they don't, that's still okay. Yeah. Yeah. So what you're going through right now, Mm. all of us go through. It's like the breaking before the the true part of who we are is actually released, right? Mm. But there has to be a bit of shedding. The the word of God says that um, our our father is a God or something Mm -hmm. along those lines that he prunes and he fixes. And sometimes that's just a season. And that season can be a year or two, two, three, four. However long he sees fit. But you have to be willing and you yes. have to, to to want to run through it. And it happens to the best of us. But what's important is that you do not glorify friendships, people's opinions, and all of that other stuff mm. more than God. Of course. And what he says about me and who he says I am. Exactly. And mm. and, and that's the big thing when, when we think about purpose and going back to the question that you had asked me 
is that because we realize that purpose is just not the thing, mm -hmm. it's part of the process. Mm -hmm. It's important to then acknowledge that the process is actually where the price is. Mm -hmm. Because the, uh, if we get the process right, that's the only way we're going to get there. For sure. Right? And if you're an ambitious person, you know that the process is actually the thing. Yes. Because... Once you achieve something, you're like, oh, I want 10,000 subscribers. And you achieve it, you're like, oh, okay, great. Hmm. Yeah. And now I want 20. Yes. And then after 20, you want 100. Now yes. after 100, you want a million because the bar is constantly being raised. Yes. But what's important is the person that God is shaping at every milestone. One of those milestones. To eventually get us to, 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 to the stages and the big things that we called yes. for. You know, so it's a process. It is a process, yeah. And I think you're right when you say that you just have to be open to it and God really just needs an open heart. Yeah. Like someone who's really just willing to just say, hey, sir, um, yeah. you spoke to the fact that you had quit your job yeah. and you just said, sir, this is me. Yeah. Here I am, do something. Yeah. Um, and that's similar to my story in that I was at UCT and just severely depressed mm -hmm. and with a lot of anxiety. And looking back at it, I think my anxiety came from the fact that I knew I wasn't doing what I was meant to be doing. Yeah. And Google was screaming on the inside, although I was attending lectures and all of that um, and amongst other things. But I decided to take a leave of absence and I was mm -hmm. just like, you know what? I'm not going to consult anyone at home. Terrible idea. Don't do that. But <laughs> I did that and I went into a fast immediately. Yeah. And God just really really started to speak to me. I was like, sir, I don't know where my life is going. I don't yeah. know what you have ahead of me. I don't know what you've planned for me, but I'm trusting that whatever it is that you've put inside of me will come out yeah. and that you'll help it come out and you'll create an environment and a career where I can be my most authentic self. And I think that's my biggest blessing. Yeah. Like not having to be something or someone else yeah. and just welcoming the struggles that come along with the process because the process is the prize um, but also I think in understanding that the process is the prize doesn't necessarily mean that it's always going to be fun. Yeah. And I, I, for the most part, I don't think the process actually is yeah. fun. I think you only really start to enjoy it when you've hit certain milestones and pinnacles. You're like, okay, cool. Everything I went for yeah. was within reason. But when you were speaking about me grieving, I'm just realizing that like, if I had not gone through this, if I had not grieved, I would not be able to have the space or the capacity for the things that God was going to bring or yeah. is bringing in my life. 100%. And I think it's also important to acknowledge, like I always say that I think in pictures, yeah? Mm. So um, like a picture I'd give to you is almost something along the lines of it feeling like you're on a surgery bed. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and the process is surgery actually being done. And mm. that's what God is doing right now. Mm. It doesn't mean that when he's done, you're going to get up and you're going to be ready to play soccer and like ready to you know, rumble. You yeah. know, you're going to go through some growing pains as you yes. learn how to function after yes. the surgery. So the stitches, you know, the pain, you're going to get on uh, painkillers, antibiotics, whatever the case is. Mm. Yeah. But it's part of the process because the surgery is for a specific reason. It's, yes. for, it's for like a specific end result that you want to get into. So you mm. are going to take a bit of time to adjust. So it becomes important to realize it's just temporary. Yeah. That's all it is. Forever. It's now forever. You know, I, I, I know every time I'm having a bad moment, I normally say to myself, it's a bad day, not a bad life. Yes. Yeah. Like Definitely. my life is great. Amazing. Today is not great. Mm. And that allows me to not think of things in totality, mm -hmm. but to think of, to think about things from just momentarily. Mm -hmm. Like I acknowledge that today is terrible mm. and that's fine. I'm going to wallow in it. Mm -hmm. But when I'm done, we got to kick butt. Yeah, we've got to get up and start over. Exactly. And tomorrow has new purposes and new plans for me and you might as well enjoy that. Yeah. yeah. I think that I, oh, as you're speaking, there's like a sense of self I don't even want to say self-confidence. Yeah. There's like an assurity that you have. Mm. And I almost want to say it's, it's the fact that you believe in what God has put in you yeah. so much and what he has spoken over you so much, mm -hmm. which I'm finding so beautiful. And oh, the word isn't coming to me, but it's like, it's, I want it. <laughs> can, can I tell in you short, what it is? I want it. Can I tell you what it is? Mm. Um, somebody asked me like, why and how do I believe in myself so much? And my response to them was that I don't, I don't actually believe in myself so much. You believe in God. I believe in God. Amen. And for me, my, my every day is based on knowing who God is. Yes. Like when he says the word that I sent out mm -hmm. will accomplish what I have sent it to accomplish. For sure. I believe that. 100%. So if God has sent a word out that this shall be the 
life that I live, mm. no matter how much I doubt myself, mm. like, I'm not going to doubt God. Mm. Does that mean that like sometimes I I'm scared? I'm not. I am scared for sure. I sometimes I'm just like gosh, like today I don't. I, I can't boss babe today. Yes. Like I don't feel boss baby. Yes. Right. But the confidence of just knowing who God he is, is that for me is like shucks this is not a me mm. thing and it, it also goes back to a conversation i love having is is decentering yourself yes i think Amen. for the most part we are in good virtue mm-hmm. very selfish people 100%. very we very egocentric even yes. in the most humble way possible mm-hmm. where we make everything about, about us. us so no my purpose is about me yes. my purpose is like when i reach my purpose i'm going to buy a jaguar and then i'm going to live in this place and mm-hmm. and it's like if you really understood and you knew God, you would mm-hmm. realize that your purpose is tied to millions of people. Yes. That lives are going to be changed by virtue of you. Yeah. The expense of cars, the houses, and all these monetary things become a result. Of that. Of that. Mm. So you then move your mind from being self-centered around what it's going to do for you mm. to what will this do for the kingdom of mm-hmm. God? What will this do to people who are sitting there looking for answers or looking for answers that God has given me? me. Yes. You know, so it's, you have to remove yourself out of the equation mm. and put God and say, what would God do? Yeah. Like in my industry, like if you think for yourself right now, you say in your industry and where you are mm. and the platforms that you've been graced to have, mm. what does God want to do? Yes. With them. And when, when you start making that prayer, you will literally see him begin to align every single thing mm. that is aligned to his purpose. Mm. But you are just a servant in there and yeah. he's using you to like move yes definitely yeah. i think when you even spoke to basically you're speaking about your identity yeah. and just really realizing that your identity is in christ yeah. and that's something i've been starting like i've started to say as a recent yeah. like oh google it's who are you and like oh, i'm a child of the most high like yeah. that's the first thing that comes out of my yeah. mouth because before anything else yeah that's truly who i am everything Important. that i'm able to do everything that he has graced me with is because of him yeah. and his goodness and i i like what you said also just about focusing more on him than me because when i focus yeah. on myself i see my shortcomings i see the the fact that I'm human, I yes. see the fact that like, you know, my flesh sometimes be fat and it'd yes. be winning. But like, yeah. if I can just move my focus onto him and see that he's a good God, he is a righteous God, that he's a faithful God yeah. and that he's never lost. Like I always say, like being on God's side or on his team always feels like being on the winning team. I don't yeah. like to be on the losing team ever yeah. in yeah. general. <laughs> so I want to be where the winners is at. And I feel like he really does allow for all of us to be winners because a part of him is within us. He Absolutely. lives with yeah. us. Can I say something about you know, when you say that what's landing in my spirit a lot is that whenever we think about winning, we just think like every day is going to be victory. Like I'm going to start on a 10, end on a 10, whoop, whoop. It's going to be amazing. Yes. But sometimes um, they say that you have to, you have to lose some fights to win win. the war. Yeah. You know, sometimes winning Mm. comes with loss Mm. because God, there's a, a scripture, there's like a trend in the Bible where, where it says, then God said it was good. Mm -hmm right? Then God said it was good. Mm. God is the only one who who can can identify and say that this is good. So sometimes Mm. you lose a relationship, a friend, Mm. a deal, something that you thought was good, but God is like, no, it's not babe. When it's good, I'll, I'll let you know when it's good. I will pull through, you know? Mm. So it's important to realize that that victory comes within the pruning comes with obedience, but comes with trusting even on the days where, it doesn't feel trust trustworthy. Like yeah. it doesn't feel like, Lord, you said I'm victorious. Why is this happening to me mm, today? You know, mm. things like that. It's just realizing that he knows what's good. Yeah, he does. And he'll deliver what's good. Yes, he will. So if this has not been delivered, then it wasn't sure, good. It wasn't good or it wasn't for me. It wasn't yes. good for me and what he's trying to do for my mm, life. Mm. So it's all about resting. And the biggest question that I would ask you mm-hmm. and everybody watching is... What's your relationship like with reading the word? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mm. because one of the things that I've seen work in my life is my confidence and my knowing who God is Mm -hmm. comes from spending time with him. Yes. Now, I know that we can like lay in our beds and like pray in our hearts, Mm -hmm. which is cute. Mm -hmm. I like that. 
but the word of God is so powerful. Yes. You can only know the character of who God is when you read really his word, the Bible, yes. and you really start beginning to and and when you look at when you look at stories in the Bible, don't look at them as stories. Put mm. yourself in those shoes. Yes. Like put yourself in David's shoes and you know you climbing up there then you see whoever that is and what if she looked cute? Yeah. What you would know you what I'm saying? Done? What would you do? in your yeah. flesh yes. you know what I'm saying like things like that because I think when we look when we read the word as stories because we know the outcome we can be quick to judge yeah and see how my David was a sinner excuse me 100% do not be the first who cast the stone exactly child. so you have to read it and put yourself in your shoes like when you look at Ruth and be mm. like shucks would I follow my mom-in-law like after my man has died, uh, died all the way through. Um, I would not be living with her, period, respectfully. You see, I, I, I would just say, I would be living with mine. She's yeah. like the best thing that has oh, ever happened I love to me. That. She's like, love her. I would follow her everywhere. Yes. But it's like just looking at those, like Peter, for instance, mm. right? Who denies Jesus. And be like, oh my God, why would you deny Jesus? They were trying to kill the man. For sure. You know what I'm saying? It's like things like that. But when you get to see how God is so gracious to all these people, how God refers to David as the man after my own heart, mm. after he's done all of that, you realize that God is not in the business of our actions. He's in the business of our, our hearts. hearts. Because, oh, this is going to be so good. I was sharing with my sister. Mm. Because I, 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 I feel deep down in my spirit that our generation, to, the, to an extent, mm -hmm find it hard to understand the concept of I came so that you might have life. Yes. And so that you might have life abundantly. Yes. We look at abundance as like, oh, abundance is like me having money, me doing this, yes. me pursuing my career, just me being a boss babe. But you realize that one of the biggest um, things that the Jesus speaks about in the New Testament is eternal life. Mm -hmm. Do you know what eternity means? Mm. Eternity means you live forever. Ever and ever and ever. And ever and ever and ever. Amen. Amen. That on its own should inform you oh, yes. that whatever is happening right now in this world yes. is of this much value. 100%. Is a mere assignment. Mm. The 50, 80, 100 years you're going to live here mm. is a mere assignment mm. that you still have to overcome and in continue order to, to live before that. 100%. So what we do is that we, we, we follow our flesh and we make this our eternity. Yes. And the Lord is like, there's so no. much more waiting for you. This is like just a piece of it. So yes. it's it's important to realize that, like I was saying to Melissa the other day, like eternal life, I wouldn't sell my soul for, for anything. nothing. For nothing. Like eternal anything. life is like you going nowhere. Also to sell your soul for such a short period of time exactly. on this ghetto earth. I'm just kind of like, that's that's madness. For other people. Yes, for other people on top of that. Yeah. Not for yourself, for other people, because mm. that's what we do. So it's important to realize that that's the will of the Father for us, mm. is for us to have eternal life. life. It means that even when our bodies die yes. in this world, yes. our spirits continue to live in whatever dimensions that the Lord will present as time comes. Yes. But this... It's a this. pit stop. Like, it's all it is. Mm. It's important. It's great. It's amazing. It's challenging. But it should never make you lose sight of what the goal is. Oh, and as you're speaking, it's just making me go back to what you're saying about grief and realizing that, like, I mean, what I'm going through is deep, but it's not that deep. <laughs> as you're speaking. Because yeah. I'm just, like, honestly, holding on to people, holding on to circumstances, holding on to business deals that truly aren't aligned for you and aren't yeah. meant for you. It's just a waste of your time. Yeah. And you're not serving yourself and you're not giving God honor by keeping yourself in those spaces yeah. anyways. Like yeah. letting go of something, yes, it may be hard and it may be like really hurtful in the moment, but once you heal, you really do heal. And one thing I wholeheartedly believe in is God's power to restore. Yeah. Like one thing about that man, he may take out, but Girl. trust me, when he spins the block on you, it's almost as if something didn't happen. I actually was reading something the other yeah. day that spoke to the fact that um, God can heal us to a certain point but are we prepared to be healed to the point where we no longer even think that that thing happened? Mm -hmm. Because you can learn certain things in survival mode, yes. right? And you'll be like, okay, cool. God, God will get me out of this, but I still kind of have these habits that I've learned from that period yeah. of my life. Yeah. Whereas I've started to realize that like God can really deliver you from something so much so mm -hmm. that it can almost feel as if it did not happen yeah. and that you are unscathed yeah. by what had gone down. But also that's the nature of who God is. Mm. God says, I remember your sin no more. Yes. Right? Like yes. it's it's deleted. It's, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know about, what you're talking about. Right? That's his nature. Mm. So essentially he, we are made in that image. Yes. 
of that. So we are mirrors and we are reflecting mm. that part of who God is. Mm. So you realize that most of the things are, even the Bible says nothing is new under the sun. Yes. Yeah. It means that even all the things that we see, are, they, they are in the word of God. Yes, they That's are. That's why I will always encourage people, like just read your Bible. Also, I love being able to personalize it because for the longest time I used to look at the Bible as like, oh, this ancient book, like, yes, we hear about God yeah. in it, but I used to be very detached. Yeah. And like you said, honestly, putting yourself in the shoes of yeah. the characters will change your life yeah. and also realizing that the miracles or rather the power he had to perform the miracles in the Bible exists till this day. Literally. It may not look the way that it did in the Bible yeah. but the things that he did then he is more than capable to yeah. do now in yeah. our lives in a way that may look different but like he is still doing there. Very. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and you need to be willing to commit to the journey. Yeah. That's 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 a, that's a big word for me. It's mm, commitment. Mm. Like, do you have the right amount of commitment to walk it through? Because yes. it's nice to walk it through when the brand deals are popping yes. and the friends are all over you, yes. and you look like you're moving, you're buying a new car, and things like that's great. Hundred percent. But are you still going to be able to do that when you're being pruned for the next level? Yep. Where is your heart? Exactly. Who does it belong to? And who's mm. are you? Yeah. Yeah. Very important, Michelle spoke to me this whole episode I feel like this was honestly for me um yeah I really just feel like God really sent you to to just reiterate some things over me because I needed that and I think your confidence and your surety in God is so infectious that you don't really leave myself or anyone else possibly listening to this the choice of not committing to God and being sure of who he is and knowing that we're made in his image and that like he loves us yeah he really does and that he has such great plans for us and that no matter how hard it gets there's always um there's sunshine at the end of the tunnel yeah yeah sometimes there's sunshine in the tunnel yes yeah you're right like yeah I think that's also the coolest thing about individual journeys is that it never looks the same yeah it never looks the same what someone has gone through before you doesn't mean that's what you're going to go through and just because Mm. that was a dark season in their lives doesn't mean that that's gonna turn out the way yeah um, that specific way in my life either so yeah I guess you're right just trusting the process and trusting that God is doing a good work within you wherever you are no matter what is happening around you is so important and just keep moving yes you know like that becomes so important I think we're crippled by things not going our way that we get stuck yes and especially as children of God we'll mask it in different things like we'll run away and say well I'm fasting it's great that Mm. you're doing it or run away and say well I'm having a retreat and that's great but let it not be an excuse for you not wanting to actually do the work yes or for you not actually wanting to To move forward and to show up you know Mm. so it becomes important to realize that there's a parable in the Bible about the talents where um, mm-hmm. he, the master gave uh, a couple of people talents and he said, do what you will I'll and then back. come back. Yes. You know? And I always think about this to myself that every time I miss an opportunity or every time I have an unfruitful day, mm. I always feel like, have I been the person that buried their talent mm. today? Like, what did I do in the tweet? Like if the master had to come back after this 24 hours I spent today. Yeah. And be like, girl, well, will I have multiplied something? Yes. You know, and that, that's important. And I think to the topic around purpose, it's like when you look at that whole parable in the Bible, you realize that it says that he gave them according to their ability. Yes. Right? You will always be given what you can handle. Mm. So whatever, and I mean it from a good place and even with a bad thing. It's like you will always be given the amount of drama and things you don't like. But God knows you can handle them. Yes. You'll always be given the amount of finances and because God knows you can handle them. Mm. So if you want to be given better things like better deals, better money, better that, mm. then you have to increase your ability to take to care of those, those things. things. But you have to understand that when you increase your ability to handle those big things, mm-hmm. you've essentially increased your ability to handle bigger problems. Mm-hmm. So essentially, it's like they go hand, hand in hand. hand. Yeah. Which one would you rather have? Yeah, for sure. I'd rather progress in life and know that like my ability to handle these things is getting bigger and better and knowing that trusting in God to yeah. help me even when those things aren't going my way yeah. and knowing that he's in my corner. Exactly. Yeah. But guys, that's all that we have for today. Yeah. Michelle, thank you for your time and for thank really just for sharing your wisdom. Me. I really appreciate it for me myself. Oh. I know the gang will really love this episode and be able to take a lot from it. But Michelle, where can they find you? Where can we hear of you? Do you have any up and coming projects that we should be looking mm. out for? Anything? Yeah. So there's exciting things coming. Okay. I'm Michelle underscore expert real yes. on uh, Instagram. Then Michelle and expert. Michelle underscore expert on everything else. Okay. Just follow me and you're going to see all the videos. Okay. Yeah. I love that that guys just make sure to head over to her socials and we'll see the goodness of god yeah amen hallelujah Hallelujah. bye guys thank you
brought to you by GN and Co.